So if we flip the valve body open, there may be some places we need to clean. Definitely want to clean this mating surface over here. Yeah, we want to clean this part of the valve body, this mating surface over here, also these plates, and this part. Just want to clean everything as best we can. If you see any schmutz anywhere, go ahead and remove it. Then on the other side, there's some connective parts. Just basically want to clean every surface that we can. There are two seals on the electrical connector. I'm going to go ahead and pull the o-rings off of there. We're going to replace both these o-rings. They may not be the same color, but they definitely will be the same size and thickness. Should be two o-rings identical to the ones we just took off. Go ahead and put our old ones in our discard pile. And then here are our new o-rings. Gonna work the first one on there. And do the same thing with the second one. Get them into their two notches. You'll notice our Denton ball is all the way into the back position. This indicates that the transmission is in park right now. We want to make sure it stays in park. If we end up pulling on this or messing with it in any way, definitely want to make sure it goes back there. If you're replacing these solenoids, you're going to have to take things apart. But in most instances, you won't need to. I've already replaced both of these solenoids on this transmission fairly recently. You can see there's four on this version of it. If you really want your trans to run amazingly and you haven't done it before, it would be a good time to replace these four solenoids. And you can see there's a gasket in here in this part. Just try and clean off all these surfaces. Every little bit's going to help. Okay, so if we want to fix the two seals on the accumulator piston, we're going to want to open up this end plate right here. So I'm going to use a set of vice grips to give myself a little more leverage. And start all five of these screws. After we get them started, they should come out without too much issue. Probably doesn't matter, but I am going to try to keep track of them and put them back in the same location. Just in case one is a different shape from the others. I'm going to pull this plate off. Oh, we can see our accumulator piston spring is actually broken in this case. Alright, so this spring is actually broken in two places. We definitely are going to have to replace that. And you'll see on the piston itself there are two outer seals. So I want to get in there with a pick. and remove the seal get in the other one should have a similar break in it and remove the seal we're going to go find these two seals in our kit to replace them the seal should be exactly the same size just going to 
we'll go ahead and stretch the seal over it. Make sure it ends up seated correctly. If it doesn't fill in all the space, it's probably the wrong one. So let me take a second look at all this. Yeah, there is still one more seal that I could have confused it with. Alright, good. That fills in all the space. Looks like the right one. And that looks like the right one as well. Okay, so those are those seals replaced fully, all the way seated. Okay, so I'm going to need to get that spring replaced. Okay, so I had another valve body of the same year, make and model, and I went and got the spring out of it. And I can put this part back together with this spring. Push this back in there. I want to rotate it. And push it all the way down in there. And then put it back like so. And I'm actually going to need to add a little bit of fluid. So it's got a small two tablespoon cup here. I'm going to go ahead and pour some fluid into the accumulator so it's not dry when it's reassembled clean off the plate and install the screws Alright, so there's plate reinstalled. And we're going to go ahead and tighten this. Relatively tight. We're going to double check in the manual how tight it says to make these. And we can check them with our torque wrench. Okay, for almost everything on here, we need to tighten it to 35 inch pounds. So we're going to tighten those screws to 35 inch pounds. Okay, so I've got my T25 Torx bed on here. And I'm going to check that all of these Or at least tightened to 35 inch pounds. Very carefully without stripping them. Alright. So that's our accumulator piston. Both its seals and in this case the spring replaced. Okay, I'm going to take the governor body off. Go ahead and crack these two screws. And place them aside. To clean that as we can. And the governor. Uh, body as a whole should come off like so. Press on the inside there and we can see both the screen and the two o-rings. Alright, so taking our pick tool, I'm going to go ahead and pull both of these o-rings off. smaller one on this vent right here and the top one right here we're going to go find these in our kit place one of them on there and the 
other one. And we're going to remove this gasket right here. Clean everything behind it. And we'll go get the same gasket from our kit. And put it back in place. Take a look at the holes and make sure they line up in the same way. Should have holes on this side for both of those little sections. And place this back together. Push this piece all the way in. Okay. And line back up our screws. Those other holes are for the valve body screws. That looks good. We got it all straight. Take the screws back out real quick. Go ahead and place the other part back on there. It should slide into position. Make sure we clean it off real good. And we're going to put the screws back in it. And these need to be tightened to 35 inch pounds. Try not to roll these screws. Double check that I'm exactly at 35 inch pounds. Okay, so that's both of them at 35 inch pounds. So have to be careful there, use two hands. Make sure not to roll that screw. Alright, so our gasket and our old set of O-rings can go back in our discard pile. Okay, it's always something. So I had a part come out that I didn't really know what it was, and it was this part. And what this is, is it's the plug that goes with the intermediate shaft. There's a little cap that goes on the other end of the intermediate shaft. And this plug goes into this end. So if you haven't taken apart the drive shell and the annulus gear and the planetaries and all that stuff, and you see this part... No, it's not a part of the valve body. It's not one of the valve body plugs. It's actually part of this intermediate shaft. So if you should it come loose, or if you have a shift kit or you're replacing it, you just need to loop it up really good and find a way to center it. All right, so I've got this nail here, and it's big enough to pass all the way through it. That'll let me put some pressure on it without getting stuck, hopefully. How will I know it's all the way seated? Believe me, I'm not certain I do. Looks like it's gone in about halfway. It's probably where it ends up. So of course this plug holds this thrust washer in place. And part of how we can check by installing the clutch packs on the drive shell. Now there is a second washer that needs to go into the clutch packs when they're combined together. 
So you usually got to hold it on there with some petroleum jelly. It only fits one way. So it usually fits like that so that you can see the notch in it. Now we can attempt to put the two things together. Hopefully if the clutch packs are aligned, this will all go together. This can take a few attempts sometimes. It's not always easy to do. And I've mentally wondered if this has fit together correctly before with this gap this way, or if it still needs help to get farther all the way seated into the drive shell. So you can see that that doesn't stay put once we've placed it down. It needs to be pulled back over and we can take a look again. Now mind you we only have four clutch rings on this side. So when aligned correctly, past the first one, second one, third one, fourth one. Okay, so that's what it looks like fully assembled. So it looks like we put that plug far enough in that it's going to be able to be reassembled in the case correctly. Okay, to set the uh, transmission up to reassemble it, I've got this piece of wood here cut to fit the case and give me some stability. And we've already done this rear overdrive piston retainer. gasket which goes behind it and cleaned all the passages in there. We've already done our rear band and we've already done both of these servos, front and rear band servo. I haven't tightened my rear band yet but I don't want to do that until it's assembled. So I'm going to take the planetary ear assembly and all of these things and reinstall it in the transmission. So there's bell housing, some gears, quite a few parts here. So coming from the front end, I'm going to take the entire assembly, thread it through the reverse band and the reverse drum. Slowly work it into position. You'll see there are some teeth that line up with the reverse band. You just want to push it until it's all the way flat. And it should still rotate freely. You grab a hold of that center gear, or if you grab a hold of the rear gear. Okay. You want to be sure to have cleaned any debris off of this. Anything that you can remove at all. Okay, everybody. So we've reached the point where the transmission is pretty much rebuilt. And now you either need to go on to the part 5 video and watch how to rebuild the overdrive unit. Or just keep watching this video and that'll explain uh, the steps after rebuilding the overdrive unit to get everything reassembled. So now that I have completed rebuilding the overdrive and the initial two clutch packs, everything that needs to be soaked in transmission fluid has already been soaked. I'm going to go ahead and take my pan full of transmission fluid, hold it over another pan, 
and pour the fluid back into a container. I'll pour it through a paint filter if I think there's too much junk in it. So here's my paint filter, just to get that last little bit without there being anything in it. You'll see I had two more discs than I needed. Give me a couple extras at the shop. And you can just let this pan drain so you have all your fluid. All right. So next we're going to be installing the overdrive piston into the overdrive piston retainer. We want to take a small amount, well, decent amount of petroleum jelly and put it on both the inner and outer seals. Get them both to where they're lubed up. And to get this seated, we're going to need to line up these two bore holes with these two pins. Go ahead and fill in the lip with petroleum jelly, working your way around. All right, and once we've got it lubricated all the way around, we're going to take a thin feeler gauge. I'm using a six thousandths of an inch here. And we're going to work our way around to get the seal to seat. So we'll go through the inner one. And around in a circle. Just careful not to nick it. Let's move it back and forth a little bit as you go. You want to be putting some pressure on it. And you might have to do it more than once. If it gets fidgety on you. Just want to keep even pressure on it with your hand. And go all the way around till the second seal starts. And then the same way, move all the way around it, pushing it flat while pressing on it to get it past the point where it started. For any reason it's not lined up with those bore holes on the inside, it may not go. You may have to pull it back off and double check. Check out in the right location. Make sure it's in the right location. Go ahead and do it over again. Better to take your time and go slow than to nick it or fudge it. If one end goes too much faster than the other, it might be an issue. Okay, lining up those bore holes in the back and then going around the center with the feeler gauge, pushing that seal flat while creating pressure on the overdrive piston. So you get it past a certain point, you can move to the outer seal. All right, well that did not work out. So I'm just gonna go back to reassembling this transmission the way I've done it in the past, which is to take all of the 
planetary sun gear and annulus gear and to push them all the way back into place in the case like I just did. All right, and then we are going to get most of our parts. It's a thrust washer. Take our thrust washer and put some petroleum jelly on it, specifically on the back, but on both sides, really. And we're going to stick it in there. And then we're going to take our two clutch packs and we're going to take our other thrust washer that has a notch in it. And you can see the notch right here. And we're going to put some petroleum jelly in it. And we're going to stick it into the reverse clutch pack by tilting it sideways and putting it in there. There's only one way it goes. So just keep rotating it till it sits flat. Now we're going to take both clutch packs and we're going to turn them over. Make sure they stay together. And we're going to fit them in here. So if you just hold on to it and put some pressure forward, you should be able to line it up on the middle gear. Maybe we've got three frictive plates to move past. Keep pressure towards the rear of the transmission. And wiggle it around a little bit. So you get it to see. Sometimes you might have to rotate it back and forth a little bit. If it's really not cooperating, take it back out. And take a pick. And realign your four discs in the reverse clutch pack. Or actually it's the rear clutch pack. Just go around on every side. Till it looks lined up again. Make sure your washers are still where they were. And go ahead and give it another shot. Okay. And if you get it to seat in the sun gear, that should be all four of them. All right, our next move is going to be to grab the band. Of course, we're replacing the band, so not our original one, but our new one. It's gonna put something in there to help me with gravity. So I've got a new band here. Transmission fluid on it. Make sure it's not going in there totally dry. You could also soak the band so before you use the transmission. Obviously, you're going to fill it all the way up with fluid. So I just like to make sure it's wet. Make sure it's soaked in as much fluid as it will immediately. Now there are two different versions of the band. One with two notches and one without. We've got the version here with two notches, 
So the notches are going to go toward the front of the case. Just want to bend it into a circle. I'm going to hang on to the middle part here. Let's get it caught. And slip one edge past the clutch pack. Then slip the other edge past. Might have been easier to put the band in first. Gonna go ahead and do that. Take apart my two thrush washers. Put my back thrush washer back in there. Squeeze my band. And of course the notch needs to go towards the front. So there's the notch and towards the front of the case. Okay, so band first then washers then hopefully everything's still lined up Put the front pack and the rear pack together okay there's the rear pack and the front pack in not 100 percent certain that it's all the way in check looks like it was one washer on one side one washer on the other So anyway, servo has a little piece of metal, connects it to the band, and the band needs to be squeezed in. And then you twist the lock screw most of the way into place and it should hold the front clutch pack both these bands are going to need an actual adjustment get them as close as we can just by hand Alrighty, so let me just clean this off. And we're going to go and get the pump gasket and take a look at all the holes. Be sure it lines up with everything. So one, two, one, two, three. Like that's about right there. You can see all five of these holes, these two passages. This one gets divided right there. It's not too bad. 
All right, now we take our pump assembly. I'm gonna take a look at all the same holes we just looked at on the gasket. I'm gonna put a little bit of petroleum jelly on these two metal rings that go on the shaft of the pump housing. Just lube this up and squish those rings in as far as we can. And then make sure it's lined up. So that hole right there is the same hole. up on the pump and push it into place hopefully if everything's assembled correctly without too much effort the pump should slide in its position and stay put Probably a good idea to put some petroleum jelly on the outside edge of the pump. Take a soft mallet and just knock it in the back all the way in. All right, so taking a look, I can still rotate it just slightly. really didn't line it up and it's close, you get a long punch or a pin. And rotate the pump with the punch ever so slightly. To get it to line up. That's looking pretty solid all the way around. All right, so all these bolts have little washers on them and we have new ones in the kit to replace them with. So I'm gonna take these out and replace them with new ones. Okay, so each one gets a new washer. And then goes into its location. This pump is still not fully seated. Probably wouldn't be able to turn it if it was. But we are going to pull it in that last little tiny bit after we get some of these bolt started so I'm going to tap a little bit more so hopefully to get it to seat all the way and of course we're going to need a socket wrench this is a one half Inch socket wrench, and I'm going to get myself an extension. Okay, and as you work your way around the pump, you should see it seat more fully. I want to get super tight here. Just want to get them snug, and then we're going to get the torque wrench. I 
I'm going to move around a little bit. Don't necessarily just go in order because the pump is seating itself little by little. You can see our vent hole has ended up near the top. Some of them have a plastic insert on the vent hole. That's not how this one is. One detail that I haven't taken care of is this uh, plug for the reaction tin or for the pan that goes with the main band. Make sure it doesn't leak. You might want to put a little bit of some kind of Teflon tape or pipe thread sealant on it. All right, so getting this plug started. Oops. Might take a small amount of patience. All right, just don't cross thread it. And it's an aluminum case, so basically you don't over tighten it. Just tighten it until it stops. That should be sufficient. Going back to the pump bolts. Get our torque wrench out. Let's take a look at what it says to tighten the pump bolts to. Okay, so we're going to install the pump bolts to 15 foot pounds. And a lot like doing a car tire, I like to move around in a star pattern. Alright, so after we've done them all once, sometimes it's a good idea to go through and check them. And just make sure they are all... At 15. There's our pump reinstalled. Okay, so normally I would build the transmission by putting the bell housing down after putting the clutch packs back in and after putting the pump back in. I'm going to try something a little bit different. Uh, I seem to have been persuaded to give it a shot to do it differently here. And I'm just going to roll with it. So what I'm going to do is attempt to put the overdrive on first. First steps is going to be to put the gasket in place. So we removed the old gasket earlier when taking apart the overdrive. We'll go ahead and bring out this gasket right now. On some of the transmissions, this is a two, a single piece gasket. This is the two part version of the gasket, which makes it a little easier to get the overdrive on and the piston on 
the piston retainer on separately from the actual overdrive unit. All right, so I've got a couple of blocks I'm going to use to get things a little bit higher. I'm going to turn the unit upside down so that it matches the orientation of the transmission housing. All right, and so the last piece is this race. It has a sleeve in the middle which needs to point towards the front of the transmission. It fits into the overdrive unit right there. It says to cover it in a liberal amount of petroleum jelly in the dealer service manual. So we're going to get that covered in a liberal amount of petroleum jelly and stick it into the overdrive right there. Can lube up the intermediate shaft. I want it to fit in there gracefully without any binding or issue. The bolt holes do appear lined up pretty good. And of course, if you misalign the parts inside of the overdrive, you will have to disassemble it to get them correct. All right, so that's the end of part four of our 42RE rebuild. And um, we're moving on to part six at this point. If you uh, missed part five on how to rebuild the overdrive, it should be in the um, series of videos right here but if you're going in order you should have probably watched part five when we are about a quarter of the way through this video um, so please like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so that we can get you more content like this if you're actually rebuilding your transmission along to these hang in there you're getting close and happy wrenching